Hey guys and gals, I got another one for you today. Today I'm in my T110E4 and this is replay mode, so it's not in-game gameplay. And honestly, I don't remember. I think I was working on the Tuscop, not 100% sure. This is actually before the Italian tanks came out, so this replay is from a little while ago. It's kind of been put on the back burner and finally get to bring it out to the light. And I'll be honest, it's not an ace tanker. Uh, but it does kind of show off one of the reasons why I love this game. Um, and that's when you find somebody on your team that is competent and willing to work with you, especially in endgame scenario, uh, where too often you watch your team all uncoordinated fall apart at the end, where it seems like the red team has everything put together. All right, so T110E4. A lot of people think this tank's overpowered, and I think that's just because a lot of people pack pure premium rounds in this thing, and the penetration on the APCRs are pretty nasty. However, it does get pretty expensive, and to me, it's unnecessary if you just play your gun correctly. So I don't feel the need to pack APCRs in this. And honestly, I don't mind fighting T110E4s. I don't think they're that strong. Um, tracking it, getting behind it, shooting the engine deck when they're like trying to side scrape, shooting their lower plates, shooting their uh, cupola. There's just a lot of weak points about this tank. And yes, the gun is great when it's um, doing work, hitting things for 800, 900 damage. However, it does have a pretty long reload, which you can take advantage of. And all the weak points like I talked about already. Alright, so, in Ruinburg, generally I like to take City. Um, I don't think the field is that important, but I will go field if I'm in, like, a scout or a fast medium tank where my team doesn't um, go out there. I try to at least slow them down a little bit to buy my team time in city uh, because if you do win field you can flank around behind the enemy team in the city and that's usually going to be a win so when i say s field isn't that important i just feel like you can defend the field fairly easily and you'll see that in this match so we have like three guys actually participating in the field and one back by Artie, and they're going to hold off not even that many reds, um, but this AMX 5120 is kind enough to just pull out broadside so I can get a shot into him. And I'm paying attention to what's behind me on the map. Now if they start getting flooded, uh, if red team comes pushing in against my teammates over there, I'm probably going to turn around and I'm going to help deal with the push. Um, but if it's just going to be a slow play battle behind me, then I'm not too worried about it. And I just want to keep my hit points and try to punish anything that crosses the middle. So I smack that 5120 and I'll leave them on a little bit of hit points. We are down one tank right now, but I just don't feel like there's a need to push either side. Our field's still doing pretty decent. Now there's a hull down Kronwagen out here, which makes it pretty tricky. The Kronwagen is one of my favorite heavy tanks, but I know that the gun handling is garbage on that thing. So I'm not too threatened by him. And I'm going to go for a Coppola shot here, and I miss that. It also could have been a hull shot. I don't remember, honestly. There was a little bit of his hull exposed, um, but he was also kind of angled down where I could see the top of his turret, so um, overmatched the roof on there. There he kind of lets his guard down and exposes his side, so I get a shot into him there. And now we're down two tanks. But I still don't feel like the need to push right now is necessary. I feel like I need to hold to make sure that my team can clean up city. 
So I get another shot into the Kronwagen. He takes my track off. And now you can see I've loaded HEs. I think my last shell was an HE. And really that's because if you hit the top of the Kronwagen's turret, um, it's not that strong. So hitting it with an HE is going to damage that tank pretty well. And you can see now he backs off. So to me, I feel like he's not going to be a threat. And this 4005 shit barn is wrecking my team so I just need to go deal with this guy I really feel like my team continually let this guy reload his gun which is really frustrating because to me the shit barn is not did I just bounce off him did you guys see that my shell just bounced and went to the left now if I wasn't in replay mode we could have seen where my shot went but I think I think what happened is I hit dead tank. But does it bounce off dead tank? I don't know. But Dan Close, my object 705, shuts down the ship barn. And now we're in a 4v5 situation. You could say a 3v5 situation because Artie's on our team. But Artie takes down the waffle before he dies. So I'll, I'll, I'll let him be the fourth man. Uh, unfortunately, the Wizard 120 shuts him down, and now we're in a 3v4. Alright, so my scout is trying to push middle, and I think that's a bad play in a scout tank. Um, he definitely should try to keep his tank out wide. Like, alternatively, go down the A line and out the zero line. The Kronwagen tries to be sneaky and come over there. I shut him down, and now we're in a 3v3. The scout has evacuated and it looks like he's going to head north, which I think is a good plan. He could probably just stay up in A9 and stay concealed, even like C9, and get shots into their side as we're fighting them. And now I'm thinking about how this scenario turns out, and I think the heavy tank is going to be coming in behind us. And as I turn around to go approach the heavy tank, Dan Close pushes out into the sixth line to see what's down the alleyway, and sure enough, he's got the Wizard 120 sitting there. Now, I feel like if I can hurry up, I can get in behind them, and we can pincer them, and then wherever the heavy tank is, we can deal with them. And then the scout spots, I'm sorry, this is the wizard 120. Scout spots the wizard 120 and he gets shut down. And now Dan Close says, awesome. So <clears throat> I get on my headset and I just tell him, dude, just dig in, I'm on my way. And their 1390 tries to make a play on him, but he shuts him down. And now he says help. So I don't know if he's got his mic on. Um, so when in doubt, use your radial comms. He gives me a great shot. And honestly, at this point, it just feels like it's uh, game over. He did a great job of just containing, you know, buying me time to get around the corner and flank them. Unfortunately, that shell only tracks the wizard 120. You can see at the angle that I was shooting at. Uh, makes sense that it only broke his drive wheel. He's going to make a play to try to get past us. But he goes left, and I think maybe he should have got behind Dan Close instead. Anyway, shout out to Dan Close. Nice finish in that game. Um, it's nice to have teammates that don't just throw their tank away at the end. I'll have some E4 Ace Tanker gameplay if you want to see that. And that's really all I got for you guys. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.